I challenged myself to build a streamlit app that collects our questions into a remote Firestore database under an hour walk. This is me, 10 minutes before the deadline, going crazy because nothing works on first try. I wanted to do an ask me anything video, so like any software engineer, I thought I should build my own app to collect anonymous messages. It will be a Streamit frontend app deployed in Streamit Cloud in which you can submit your name and a personal message for me into a backend store. After very careful consideration of all the options for 42 seconds, I chose Google Firestore. It's got a very generous free tier, it's part of a larger ecosystem if I wanted to add machine learning to rank messages or authentication later on. And a Streamlit employee had written a blog post about it, so I will need to endlessly navigate Stack Overflow posts looking for answers. Dinner was waiting, so I imposed myself a one hour timer to build, deploy, and share this app on social media. Will I make it in time? setting up Firestore. Today, I will use Firestore, the Firebase NoSQL database service. I opened the Firebase page, created a new project with an awesome name, refused to implement Google Analytics, waited for its initialization, a brand new project with all accessible Firebase services. I immediately looked for Firestore. I spent five minutes reading about right rule security on the database. I... <laughs> Start in test mode? Uh, I chose a location for my Firestore server. Apparently, you all come from India and United States, but I am in Europe, so I will put in Europe. And then I spent another 5 minutes reading about the pricing system. I'm glad I did not need to put a credit card for this test. It won't be able to take my money in case my Ask Me Anything video becomes so famous that I get 20k questions per day. I created my first Firestore collection. You can imagine a collection as an array of JSON documents or Python dicts. I proceeded to manually add a test message. The good thing about NoSQL databases, there is no schema to your data, you can basically add whatever field you want to any document, making this a very flexible choice when you don't have a clue what your app and data structure will look like. I wasn't really sure yet if I wanted to build a public leaderboard of all the questions, so I added the field anyway, just in case, and, and maybe I'll remove it from future documents. Save. Cool, can I edit? And I can edit the answers and edit the field. Mm. I also had a thought here. How about building a notification system so I get a mail anytime someone sends a message? The good thing about one hour challenges is that nobody has time for that. Just focus on the very essential, which is reading and writing messages from Streamlit to Firestore. Inside my favorite Windows command line tool, and yes, I'm using Windows, don't cancel my dev setup, please. Create a new folder, open it in VS Code, and make sure it connects to a Conda environment with Streamlit. Create a Python file and a requirements text file for the list of packages that will be installed on Streamlit Cloud or that other developers would need to install to run your app. I love Streamlit's live rerun feature, so I generally immediately run the app and activate Save it. Save and make sure that we always rerun. Now I can put him emojis and sometimes i embed the to-do list inside the app to remember what i need to do time to add interactive widgets into the app to input a name and a message move all the widgets inside a streamit form we want to write to firestore on a submit button click not on every change in the text boxes yeah, I need a key. I don't know Streamlit's API by heart, but the live rerun immediately displays the problem and I know how to correct this. Now that the app structure is planted, I decide to read messages from Firestore. At this point, I choose to follow what's in the Streamlit plus Firebase blog post. I install Google Firestore, I need to add the package to requirements.txt, download the keys to authenticate to the database, project settings, uh, service accounts? Was it service accounts? It is service account. Python. Oh, here's the code. Let's generate new private key. Dun, 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 dun. Important announcement. If somebody accesses the key you just downloaded, your Firestore will be open to that person. Don't ever push this key on GitHub. Add it to your Git ignore immediately. It's also a good idea to not put it in the project folder and store it elsewhere, as long as you edit the path name in your script. I built a function to connect to the database and return a client DB, but I don't want this connection to be recreated every time I stream it at 
reruns, therefore I add the experimental singleton decorator to put this into a cache that will be shared across all users of the app. Yeah, I removed the to-do uh, oh, checklist. Yeah, let's remove that. I, I believe in that. your ability to remember the free tasks that we need to achieve. Getting all the messages from Firestore was as easy as copy-pasting a cold snippet from the blog post. Oh! Woo! <laughs> I then proceeded to waste 5 minutes on choosing the best emoji for the tab in the browser, and then I got worried by metrics. Hey. Oh, there's the limit. No cost. So as long as this purple line doesn't go over that dotted line... I'm what good. did we just say about time pressure and focus? Anyway, I copy-pasted the snippet from the blog post to write a new document to Firestore with Python. I'm curious if I should catch the Firestore client throwing a quota limit exceeded error. If I go over the quota, this is supposed to... Well... Ah, uh, lazy. <laughs> I also tried to force VS Code to show the doc string for this document method. I wasn't sure if the document ID was auto-generated if I did not put any. But VS Code has no clue about this method until I actually type in the argument. Oh! Dumb ways to lose five minutes. It's working now! And now I need to... Finally time to deploy. How much time do I have left? Oh, it's been 48 minutes, 12 minutes left. 12 minutes to push on GitHub, configure Streamlit Cloud secrets and share on Twitter. Deploying! Connecting to Streamlit Cloud and pushing the project to GitHub was yeah, straightforward. But then I realized For deploying, something. We, oh, we need to convert. I cannot push my key JSON file on GitHub. Instead, I need to use the Streamlit Secrets feature, which means to locally store the JSON as a one line of text in .streamlit slash secrets tunnel file and configure it manually in the cloud so that it is not exposed to the world. Fortunately, there is a Python script in the blog post to convert the JSON file into a tunnel file, and I can reinterpret that text as JSON data in Python to finally authenticate to my Firestore. Hey, no. I have nothing, nothing, nothing. Though. My camera literally switched off when I began singing. Is my singing that bad? Maybe that's why my colleagues tell me to work from home instead of on site. I loaded the secret in Python and tried authenticating Seven again. Four. Permission denied. Why? Why don't you like me? Meh, this is the life of software engineer. It would be odd if anything worked first try. And that cost me another 10 minutes to find the stupid copy-paste mistake. I need to put the whole project name. Tell me why. After a few tests and changing the subdomain URL to something more fancy so you can share it to your acquaintances, we finally made it in one hour and ten minutes. A mission failed. This is probably one of my favorite ways of learning something new. Build a streamit app over it and then interact with that thing. Experiment with all the arguments and the inputs. Give yourself an extreme time pressure to keep you on tracks. You will also learn to evaluate the time it will take you to arrive at a draft MVP. Then also that's the way to learn how to deal with time pressure. Then when you got the base working right, you can read the documentation to refine it. For me, it would be, for example, to refine the connection to Firestore or to start working on notifications. As you can see, even by following a blog post, uh, we make silly mistakes, we need to Google things, uh, but this challenge wouldn't be funny if there was no problem solving involved. The app is still live at this address until September, so feel free to post any questions there, or thank you notes, or Bitcoin wallets. Uh, follow me for more data stories, I'll see you around, bye!